Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and I do apologize for my voice. I am getting over a bad sinus infection, so I hope that isn't too distracting for you, but we're just going to push through it. Today's video is a little bit different. Um, I'm starting out with three pieces of artwork that I created about 10 years ago, and I'm doing this to demonstrate finished pieces of a technique that I'm going to show you today. This first piece, entitled Savior, is a piece of wood-burned paper, and I have put it over a piece of reclaimed wood. This is a style that I was creating a lot in about 2015, 2016, and I'm going to be using this wood-burned paper in today's mixed media collage, as well as in the piece that I mentioned last week that I'm going to be creating for an upcoming um, exhibit that I'm gonna be entering. So I just wanted to show you the possibilities with this technique as a finished piece, first of all, and then I'm going to actually demonstrate the technique for you. This is another piece in the same style where I burned two pieces of paper and overlaid them, also applied over top of a piece of reclaimed wood. And again, this third piece here is done in the same way. I just wanted to show you the possibilities before we get started today. So what I've done here is wet a shop towel, just in case there is any burning that I didn't want to continue. I can go ahead and press the piece down on the wet towel and it will stop the burning. I have some shapes that I have cut out that I plan on using in the piece, and I'm just going to go in with the wood burner and simply burn some holes in it. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to show you uh, the beginning stages of this piece that I am going to be making for the exhibit, and I'm going to be doing that for the next few videos until I get the piece finished. So there will just be progress photos at the end of the videos instead of creating a separate video on it because it's going to be a 30 inch by 40 inch piece and I just thought with my current recording equipment that's going to be a little difficult to actually video the whole thing in a way that's going to be in any type of way pleasant for anyone to watch. So we'll just do some progress pics. So essentially all I'm doing here is creating these holes which create that nice burned sheet. And I'm not entirely certain how they're all going to look. I may cut off some of the excess paper and just do bits and pieces. Haven't decided yet, but I did want to show you this because I'm also using some of these sheets in today's collage, which I will be getting to in just a moment. And before we get started with that, I just wanted to thank you all who, who have subscribed and liked my videos. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't had a chance yet, just wanted to remind you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate it and it helps out my channel immensely. Stay tuned and in just a moment, we're going to start today's project. Okay, so here we are, and today I am using a 6 inch by 12 inch cradled wooden panel, and I can put the link to that in the description at the end. I got that off of Amazon in a pack of four. I can't remember what I paid for those. I want to say it was like maybe, it was between $20 and $30, but I'll put a link down there for you if you're interested. Uh, right now I'm covering it with a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'm just going in with some background colors just to kind of get some colors down there. I don't worry too much about the first layer in these because a lot of it is going to end up being covered up anyway, but I do want some of the colors to poke through, so I'm keeping that in mind. I'm not just randomly grabbing colors. I do have a color palette that I'm trying to work with. So I'm laying down some of that blue and uh, I'm using a color shaper for this part of the process because it kind of acts as a squeegee, so it applies color while yet just applying a lighter, kind of more translucent coat of it. And that's kind of what I'm going for here, but it also, because it's such a thin layer, the paint dries really quickly when you apply it this way. Um, I actually added a little bit of water there, you might have seen, just to stretch it out a little bit and to make some of the spots just a little more um, transparent in places. But if I was using just a regular paintbrush for this, I would have to either stop and wait for the piece to dry or stop and force dry it with my um, hair dryer or heat tool. 
I'm adding in a little bit of that warm red. Uh, I will have a list of all of the colors that I'm using in a description at the end of the video. I don't have them right in front of me and I can't recall what some of them are actually named right now, but there will be a list at the end for you. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead in with some collage. So there is one of those burn sheets that I have, and I actually did that in tissue paper. And the nice thing about that is I can tape several sheets of tissue paper together and burn them all at one time. If you're using a thicker sheet of paper, um, like I was using newsprint in the demo segment that um, you saw a little bit ago, and of course that's thicker, or if you're using even drawing paper or I've done watercolor paper before, those are obviously thicker papers and they're going to take a little more time, but with the tissue, I was able to, like I said, attach several sheets together and burn them all at the same time so that I'm getting, you know, more for my time there versus just doing a single sheet. I'm applying that with some of the Liquitex Matte Medium. That is my preferred adhesive for collage typically. The gel works nicely also, but I like the matte because I don't always want to have a gel, or I'm sorry, a uh, gloss finish. And that lets me be able to decide at the end if I want to add some sort of gloss or just keep it as a matte look. So I'm not really going into this with much of a plan, much like any of my others. If you've seen any of my other videos, that's not how I work. I am a very intuitive type of artist, kind of just going with the flow and whatever looks right in that moment or feels right with the piece, that's what I use. So I did know that I wanted to use some of these burned pieces as collage material. I just kind of wasn't sure exactly how. So we're just going in much like I did with that first layer of paint and adding this first layer of collage down just to see what we come up with. In addition to my burned collage papers, I also decided I wanted to have a little bit of uh, metallic look in this. So instead of using a metallic paint, I'm going in with some copper foil. And you can apply this in different ways. As I mentioned in one of my other videos, there is a metal leaf adhesive, which most of the time I would use for specific shapes or something that I want to be a lot more controlled. But here I am going for a very loose, intuitive, quick ideas visually. So I am just going in with my matte medium. And when I spread that down with the watercolor brush that I'm using there, you can see how bits and pieces of it are pulling up, but that's actually a look that I like. It gives it that weathered, distressed look, and I've already got the burned papers, so while it's not the exact same type of thing, it does have the same type of feel to it, which kind of brings it together in the piece. I'm going over lightly with my card there to smooth it down um, with the medium, but it does tend to break up pretty easily because it's not really intended for that, so I'm just going over it very lightly and just kind of stopping there. Now I'm going back in with some of the burnt sienna because I wanted the color to be a little warmer and more muted than just the plain tissue paper color. And I'm also going over some of the copper foil with that same paint to draw everything together. I'm wiping just a little bit of the paint away on the foil to let some of the shine through and also cleaning some of the spots of the blue in between the burned parts of the paper just to let them come through a little bit. Again, and I say this in all of my videos, all of these mixed media collage pieces are just about layers. Layers upon layers, because each individual layer itself doesn't necessarily matter, but some of it is going to show through to help bring the whole piece together at the end. Here I'm using a book page, which I love to use. If you have watched any of my other videos, I think I've used these in just about all of my collage pieces. I wanted to cut out some circles because I just had this idea in my head of a theme of circles, which kind of goes along with those holes burned in the tissue paper. But I have a larger one cut out of my book page there, and I'm adhering that down with some of the matte medium. I'm going to then at some point cover the whole thing with more paint and just again keep building layers and layers and layers because I think that brings a lot of visual interest.
I wanted to add another smaller circle, so I'm just now trying to find something that's going to be around the size that I'm looking for here, and I settled for the top of one of my paint containers, and I'm just cutting that out of another book page to kind of see what I've got going on there. Not sure exactly where I'm going to place it yet. You'll see me a lot of times in these videos just cutting pieces of paper and randomly, you know, working them around with my mind, just kind of setting them down and looking to see if I like the placement. And that's the really cool thing about collage, in my opinion. You can have all kinds of different ideas and before making a final decision, you know, just play with them, set them down, don't glue anything down, and then you're going to know whether or not you like the finished product. That can kind of be important when you're working intuitively like this because, you know, like I said, there's no real plan. I don't really know necessarily how this is going to look. I don't know what the end is going to look like. So it's good to be able to try things out. I want to use some different collage papers here. So I pulled a few different things out. Um, this is one that I had made in a previous video with some, uh, some of the foil and some paint which is an idea that I got from Created and Made Studios. If you haven't checked out her videos, she has such a great channel, and I will put a link to her channel in my description for you also. Definitely check her stuff out. It's really cool. But I wanted to further push the idea with the foil that I had underneath, so this brings it up just another layer, and it kind of will, again, make everything make some kind of sense because when you are working in this manner and using a bunch of different things, it's good to keep in mind continuity, um, at least in my opinion. It's art, so do whatever you want, but for me, I like my pieces to make some kind of a visual sense in that regard. So I also knew that I wanted to add a little more of the burned paper on yet another layer because I have some on there in the background and you can see some of it coming through but I really like the way it looks I like the feel of it and I wanted to have some of that um, closer to the top layer what's really nice about these cutout pieces on a collage is they create just a little bit of actual depth because you've got the, these holes cut out so obviously there is negative space there with positive space around it, and up against that, you have an edge that will nicely collect paint or medium or whatever you might want to do to either build up or to catch some of that color and really push the illusion of depth because there is a little tiny bit of actual depth. So it's a really nice backdrop for your mind to work with if you want to create some depth. And you'll see here, I'm just trying to work with some different collage papers. Um, I even went as far as to tear this one up and place it around the piece, but it's just not really speaking to me with the way everything else looks. So I thought maybe it was time to go back in with a little more foil, and then I'm going to go ahead and go in with a little more of the burned paper there that you see on the left to top it all off. So I mentioned the large piece that I'm going to be doing as an entry for a juried show coming up here. I'm using this piece as kind of a test piece, and probably the next few videos will be kind of test pieces for that also, because like I mentioned, it's going to be a really large piece, and while I am still going to work intuitively, I need to know that these kind of like half ideas that I have are going to work or not so much that they're going to work, but how are they working and is there a way I can improve upon it to kind of work out the bugs before I go straight for the large piece? Because I don't know, I mean, how many of you out there have worked on a large piece, maybe, maybe for yourselves, maybe for a commission, but it can be pretty daunting, that size alone, and I mean, not to mention the cost, um, the the wooden boards alone at 30 by 40 were a lot of money just like large canvases are and you know I, I hate to use the term mess up but you definitely want a piece that large to not to not be in your pile of 
paint overs, um, especially with this one because I have a purpose for it. But I just want to kind of test out some theories and ideas that I have to see what they're going to look like and know if there are any changes that I want to make before I start working on the large one. Now that I've got that new sheet of burned paper down, I'm trying to decide where I want to go next. And I'll tell you what, this piece, even though it was just a test piece and I didn't really have a plan for it, it kind of was, uh, it was a little bit rough in a couple places because, you know, normally at some point a piece will just speak to me and tell me what it wants to become. And this one was very silent and I kept pushing and trying and adding and nothing was really working. Um, you know, kind of until the very end. And I can say now that I still, I wasn't maybe entirely happy with the end result, but it, it's still good enough. And for a piece that was a test piece, it served its purpose. And for that, I'm happy. So basically, I'm kind of just going back and forth and alternating between different pieces of collage paper and paint and just kind of trying to wait to see what's going to speak to me and kind of what step I need to take next. But I'm really loving the way the paint is going on over top of the burned paper and it's really pushing the dimension like I'd mentioned before just that slight slight bit of actual dimension really pushes the visual dimension there which you know obviously makes sense but I'm really liking that aspect of it and that was something that I was hoping would happen when I started this piece. So here I'm going in with a little bit of a very bright yellow. Um, it's bright and warm at the same time which was kind of what I was looking for here and again just kind of experimenting and putting down some colors. That is a fluorescent pink that I absolutely love. I will put a link to these again in the description for you. These fluorescents are not something that I have always used in my work, but with this last body of work that I've been doing, I can't seem to get enough of them. The fluorescent pink and the fluorescent red are just, there's just something about them. I, I don't know what it is. There is just something that really grabs me in those and I want to use them all the time. So I put the yellow up top too, just to carry it through a little bit. And I'm going in here and just wiping some of that off because I want to reveal some of the copper foil that I have on the layer below there. And that's what I love about using the, the uh, matte medium there. The gloss actually is better for this, but the matte will do it also. Uh, as long as that paint is still wet, you can kind of go in and clean parts of it off and reveal what's underneath, which is exactly what I want to happen. I think this is one of those points where I was just like, okay, I have no idea what to do next. So when in doubt, I always go for burnt sienna because it's like basically one of my favorite colors and it has never done me wrong. So I'm just going in and adding a little more of that on top of the rest. I love it because it's pretty translucent and it will still show the color beneath it. So it kind of works as a glaze, especially if you mix it with some of the matte medium, which is something I've mentioned in other videos, but you can change the opacity of your acrylics by adding some either gloss or matte medium to those paints and just putting a small bit of the color in it will really a carry the paint further but also give a nice translucence to it that might not have been there to start with here i'm going in with some more of the book pages I wanted to stay with the circular shape, but I wanted to change it up a little bit. So I did the half circles and I ripped all of the paper on the outside because I didn't want to have just a straight cut edge. It just made it a little more visually interesting to me. And now I'm just working on placement of those pieces. I'm not entirely sure where I want them to sit on the board. You can still see the circles that I have underneath there. And I'm just kind of taking other little pieces of some of the cutout circles and just whatever I have lying around to try to fit it in and find a pattern or a placement that 
works for me there. I think I had that little half circle there in about a thousand different ways because I just couldn't get it to make, I don't know, to bring it together in a way that I liked. And I kept going back and forth, putting it inside that bottom half circle, and that's ultimately where I ended up deciding it served the best purpose. But it took me a while to get there, but I think I made a good decision with that. Sometimes making these pieces and trying to get to that point where it speaks to you is an exercise in <laughs> patience, which I don't always have, and definitely frustration. And there's a lot of talking to myself in my head and, you know, out loud also and saying, oh, please let this one work. Let this be the thing. And, you know, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And I'm sure you can all relate to anybody who works intuitively can relate to that kind of uncertainty and just, I mentioned in my last video, that feeling of imposter syndrome, um, that can, that can definitely be a real thing. And I think it's something that everyone goes through at some point, but it, it usually just ends up working out. It's just a matter of once you're in your head so much about it, that's what gets you. You have to stop doing that and just kind of let the creativity work its way out on its own and kind of just accept the fact that maybe you're not in control all the time and maybe that's okay. But now I've got those pieces uh, glued down onto the board. I'm going back in with some of the same colors that I've already used because right now, you know, they're just glaring book pages sitting on top of a half-constructed collage, and they just seem really out of place and kind of just garish. So I want to blend them in a little bit by introducing some of those previously used colors so that it blends a little and makes a little more sense. Here I make a decision that I end up not loving, and I guess that's something that happens sometimes, but I was trying to carry over some of that um, collage paper that had the foil and the paint on that I have in a couple other places because I thought it might be nice to have a little bit of that on an upper layer. But I don't love the placement of it, and I kind of really just could have lived without it. If I had wanted to at this point, I could have re-wet that piece and peeled it back up, but I wasn't sure yet how I felt about it, and I thought I could salvage it, which I guess I ended up doing, but if I could go back and do it again, I probably just would have left it off altogether because I don't really think it adds a whole lot to the piece, but again, it's all part of the process, and with this being a test piece, I, I don't really mind all that much, but especially as I'm re-watching the video to do this voiceover, I'm really kind of thinking, yeah, I definitely could have lived without that little square chunk there in the middle, but there it is, and, and it's now part of the piece, so we will move on. But here I'm just continuing to pull some of those background colors up to the front and cover up that last round of book pages that I put down and I'm liking it a little better now that it's kind of sinking in with the rest of the piece color wise there. Watching myself make these pieces and I think I say this in nearly every video but it it always just kind of strikes me. It's such an interesting kind of thing that I never did before and honestly I would recommend maybe if you guys feel like trying that you get some value out of it because as I'm actually working on the piece, it's not always, and this is going to sound crazy, but it's not always obvious to me what I've got going on and what direction I should go in. So I, you might find that beneficial to your own work as well. I don't know, but it's, it's an interesting um, kind of thing that I never really thought of before. 
Here I'm going in with a little bit of black paint. It's a nice flat black, which I will put in the description box for you. Um, what I'm doing is basically creating or further pushing the dimension that's already there physically to really kind of create a lot of visual depth so that it really looks like the layers are layers. And sometimes I want that in pieces and sometimes I don't, but I thought it would work well with this piece. And I do kind of like the way that it turned out. I'm going in and putting different layers of black paint and then I'm going in with my acrylic paint pen, the Posca pens, which I will also link for you in the description. Um, I just really like how much that is pulling the front pieces forward and pushing the back pieces back and really just creating a dimension, I guess, is, is really what's happening there. It kind of almost makes that top left-hand circle look more spherical than circular. And I didn't push it the whole way and actually go in and do shading. I just kind of wanted it around those edges so that it stood out just a little bit from the layers beneath. I kept going in and adding more and then wiping away the excess and just kind of building up a nice amount of the paint and the paint pen around the edges. And I, I just think it really worked for this piece a lot. I can remember at about this point in the piece as I'm going over these lines thinking, wow, I really have absolutely no idea where this is going still and I really don't know how much further I can push it because now I'm kind of just gluing and painting kind of, you know, lost on this one. But I do end up pulling it together in a way that I think works and you'll see how in just a little bit and I'll explain why I did what I did here coming up. Oh, I chose not to edit this next little bit out because I think it's important to include it. Um, I decided I wanted to put some black circles because sometimes I look at a piece and think, oh yes, it needs black circles. And it never once has actually made me happy. And I always just immediately take them right back out, which is exactly what I'm doing right here. But I thought it was kind of funny and I thought I would just leave it in for you guys to laugh at with me. So I kind of thought that I might like this a little bit more if I went around and put just a little bit of a black framed edge around it because I do that with a lot of my work and it gives it a nice finished quality and I actually really do like the way that it looks once I have this on there. And I'm just freehanding this on this piece. Um, I have often just used painter's tape to go around there to get a nice clean smooth edge. But with a piece of this size, I thought I could probably just freehand it. So I just have my arm resting on the table and I'm kind of just moving my whole arm, not the wrist, moving my whole entire arm to get a straight edge. And it, it worked pretty well for me, I thought. Ah yes, here you can see my hands going, now what, now what? So what I always reach for is some black and white collage paper in this instance. And that kind of reminds me, I've been going through this stuff like crazy and I'm gonna have to make a few more sheets. Maybe I'll do a video of that, maybe not since I already did one, but I just love what that adds to a piece. Even though, as you'll see in a minute, I didn't end up actually using any of it at all. You can see how it just changes the whole entire 
mood of the piece, I guess. It kind of lightens it up and gives it just a, a happier sort of feel, in my opinion. I don't know. I do like it, and I don't think it would have been a bad choice had I used it, but I moved some pieces around, and I kept placing them, and just really wasn't, I guess I really wasn't getting what I was looking for from it, and maybe it's just because it didn't really go with anything else that I had in there, not just color-wise, but shape-wise, I guess, which again isn't always a bad thing, but it just was not doing it for me. So what I did instead was I made these quick little stencils out of a scrap of book page that I had lying around. I just folded it in half and just cut out some very quick rudimentary shapes there. And I'm going in with the same teal color that you can see in that top circle up there because I realize it's not really anywhere else in the piece. And I feel like maybe that's the thing that's missing that would bring it all together. So I'm using that as a stencil. I mixed a little bit of the teal with some of the matte medium like I talked about before. And it added just a nice glaze of it. It's not too thick. It's not just a bunch of paint sitting right on top of there. But it does pull that teal out really nicely and I think it makes it kind of come together just a little bit better plus it gives just that one little pop of color that I needed and wasn't getting from any other thing that I was doing there so I think it was kind of the perfect way to finish this piece. I used that stencil in a couple of different areas and because I just made the stencil out of a piece of paper it was bleeding through and um, I did end up having to clean a little bit of it up around the edges, but that's okay because it was wet and it still had a lot of the matte medium in it, so it wiped right off for me there. And then I'm just going in with my paint shaper there at the bottom and making some lines, again, in that teal, because, again, it just really carried the whole piece, carried through the whole piece and brought everything together in a way that I think was missing before that. I took those lines through a couple different areas of the piece. I turned it upside down, which is always an interesting thing to do, especially with these intuitive abstract pieces, because I can work on an entire piece in one orientation and then turn it upside down to do something and decide, oh, that's actually how it's supposed to look. And that didn't happen with this one, but it, it certainly can. But I'm just going in with that blue in a couple of different areas to make everything come together. And that is kind of how I finish it. Coming up here, I will have the finished piece for you so that you can see how it all looks once it is entirely done. And immediately following that, I have the progress pics of my 30 by 40 inch piece that I'm doing for the exhibit. Now that is in its very rudimentary stages, as you can see here. That's the first layer where I'm just starting to lay down some tones and colors um, some of this will come through, some of it's just going to be a starting point for me to lay down some collage, but you got to start somewhere, and I like to start with these nice warm colors. And as you can see in this one, I went ahead and further put in another layer just with some brighter colors, and that's as far as I got so far. I'm hoping by the end of my next video I will have some of the collage done on there. I'm going to spend my evenings this week working on the burned paper parts, and uh, those are pretty time-consuming, so I'm not sure how far I will get, but I hope to have some further progress for you soon. But again, thank you everybody for hanging around and checking out my videos. I really appreciate you guys. And I will look forward to making some more art with you in the next video. You all have a great day.